Moving is an emotional experience. There is an end and a beginning. Decluttering and space clearing can be similar. We can become attached to our stuff and our things because letting go is uncomfortable. It brings up all sorts of emotions that we don't want to feel. I have been feeling tons of emotions while I'm getting ready to move out of the country and I'm starting to let go of everything, looking at all my possessions and thinking, is this needed in my life? Is this necessary? Is it bringing value to my life? Now, while you may be a little sentimental or maybe you are one season away from hoarders, both you and I are in luck because Carrie Fortin is here today. She is a dear friend of mine. She's the founder of NewMinimalism.com and she is a minimalist. Carrie coaches people through the process of letting go of their things and stuff so they can get through to the other side where there's freedom, joy, and expansiveness. Carrie is going to be taking us through my closet, coaching us around how to let things go that we may be attached to to help lighten our load. This is Carrie. Whether you're moving to Bali, or you're moving just up the street. First step is dealing with what you're gonna take with you, what you're gonna store, and what you're gonna give away. So come on, let's go to my closet. <laughs> Who are you going to be in this new location? What is it that you wanna really own and step into? And what are you ready to let go of? Hmm, I'm looking to be vibrant, alive, in the nature, running around. It's gonna be mid 80s, lots of dresses, yeah. shorts. Don't need a lot of the clothes I have in San Francisco. And just because you're moving and some things might not fit in this next stage of your life, it doesn't mean that it won't be slightly challenging to let them go. So none of this is going to work where I am going, but I do have a little bit of attachment towards my shoes. Pack, sell, give away. Definitely sell. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and this is actually where it's really helpful to have a friend um, be around and be able to hear the words that you're using. Kirsten said, these aren't gonna work where I'm going. So she knows it, and that doesn't mean that you won't feel a little bit attached, but it does mean that it's not a candidate for packing. And with something like this that is really stylish, might not necessarily <laughs> hold its style for several years, um, you don't need to store it and wait to get back and then come upon a whole box of shoes that you won't want anymore. Sell, sell, donate. I do love those, but you still have to sell them. But the important thing is to not have any totally hard and fast rules. So Kirsten gets to pick one pair of boots to store. Uh, I don't even know what to say about these. <laughs> Goodwill. So do those fit? Yes. Do they feel good? Yes. Vibrant? Vibrant. Will they feel good when you're in Bali? Absolutely. Definite pack. Are you going to wear those in Bali? Probably not. Definite sell. I think you know what to do with those. These shoes I absolutely love. They tear my feet apart. They mm. give me a blister. I've worn them twice. Donate. Comfortable? Yes. Do they hurt your feet? No. Are you going to wear them in Bali? Absolutely. Definite pack. Ah! <laughs> got to keep her. If you're going to pack something, my rule of thumb is that it's got to be your absolute favorite, some kind of treasure, something very special, or it's got to be classic. Classic lines. <laughs> Classic colors, classic style, something that will not be going out of style. So in general, I recommend storing as little as possible. So I've looked at old clothing that I've worn, uh, pieces of furniture that I used to have, and at the time I thought I would love it forever and ever. And now when I look back, I'm embarrassed because I think it's so out of style. You've got to be willing to give your future self some space. Hmm. Don't assume that they're going to want whatever is in storage right now. All right, that totally makes sense, but I got a question. What about, let's say you have a crap load of photo books because in the 90s you went to a lot of raves <laughs> and you happen to have tons of pictures from that time period? What do you do with something like that? Yeah, that's a great question, and that'll come up for everyone. You might have an abundance of things that are from a meaningful relationship, time period, and what I recommend is choosing the absolute best. Choose your favorite. Instead of having 10 albums, grab out five photos, blow those up or make it somewhere so that way you're actually interacting with them and release the rest. What about if you have something that used to be your grandfather's? Mm -hmm. Kind of really love it and I'm kind of never going to use it. Take a photo of it. It sounds kind of crazy, but what we want are the memories associated with the object, not the object itself. So if you've got a photo and I've got one on my computer called Things I Love, and it's literally just photos of things that I've gotten from people I love, from experiences that I love, and I can look through it and get all of those memories without having to carry around this stuff. What about this from my half marathon in Kauai? Yeah, awesome. So proud. Take a photo. Do you wear them? I've worn this one. How about this one? What about books? 
If you haven't read it, but you're really, really excited to, it's a keep. If you've read it, love it, refer to it all the time, it's a keep. Otherwise, donate. Love it. Not going to read it again. Reference book. Love it. Keeping it. <laughs> I haven't even read that one. I really wanted to. No. I'm not smart enough to read that. <laughs> oh my god. My dad gave me this. Fishing Essential for Dummies. I don't think I read it, and I don't think I will, but I want to keep it. You can keep it. Well, when it comes to selling or giving away, what are the guidelines there? How do I know what to do with it? Yeah, that's a great question. And my philosophy really is that if you're ever experiencing like a lot of guilt, a lot of fear, a lot of stress around having spent a lot of money on something, but not really wearing or liking it, right? We've all been there. That is a great option to sell because then you're getting some of the money back in and you don't feel so guilty about it. And selling also takes more time. So if you're in a rush, Donating is a great option. So find your favorite charity and practice generosity. Hmm. <laughs> what about if you have a blazer? It was kind of expensive. It's classic. The sleeves roll up and they're cute. I just heard Kristen say, I hope I never have to wear it again. And that is something really powerful. This jacket, while it might be a great blazer, high quality, it's from a past life that Kristen's not going back to. So this, again, is a great chance to release and fully own who you are and where you're going. Okay, from a current life, every time I wear it, it yanks my hair out. So it's like, do I keep something that I could only wear with my hair up? It depends. How often do you wear your hair up? I don't. <laughs> have to decide, is something that makes you a little bit uncomfortable going to help you be your ideal self? Going to help you like walk down the street feeling good? And if you can say, yes, I'm going to rock it with my hair up and it's amazing, keep it. Great, so now you're either gonna keep it, store it, or give it away. But what happens when the emotions bubble up? Like when you're getting rid of grandpa's bag or when you are donating the jacket? Own your humanity. Everyone experiences that. <sighs> whether you're moving down the street, whether you're moving across the country, at some level what you're doing is closing an old chapter in order to open a new one. When you are going through all of your stuff, in a feng shui sense, you're really bringing everything up to the mm. surface, you're moving things around, packaging, letting go, and um, in that sense, it creates an energetic chaos. But every time you go through the stage of shedding, there is profound growth, there is freedom, there is a lightness that comes from being so aware of who you are, and from only having the stuff that supports that vision of who you are. Ooh, and that is sexy. Leave in the comments below what it is that you are going to be getting rid of this week. Subscribe to my channel and then come over to newminimalism.com. Carrie has a free gift waiting for you. Have a great day. What about these guys? You had said earlier that you're really stepping into the next stage of vibrancy, lightness. So this seems like a keep to me. Pleather in Molly? the tropics. Not so hot. Not so hot. Not cute, sweetie. <laughs>